Hi Cancer, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your October 2021 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds, letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bulls sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Cancer. October. How will cancer be affected by the October 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. These two? Okay. <laughs> it's so funny that they turn themselves up, right? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. At the bottom is our rooted self, the left hand side is our inner self, the middle, our heart, our emotional self, the right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have strength, which is Leo energy. If we're born on the cusp with Leo or we have strong Leo energy in our natal chart, that's coming through very powerfully at our root. And we have the devil, which is Capricorn energy. So again, if we have Capricorn within our natal chart, that's coming through very powerfully at our root. We have the messenger of air, air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. If we are born on the cusp with Gemini, or again, if we have strong air sign energy in our natal chart that comes through in our inner self words are going to be very important to us the three of water the three of water for me is the three of cups is always the people who couldn't celebrate us that we desperately want them to celebrate us you know we desperately wanted them to be there for us and this is going to be a time where we're starting to come to acceptance with a lot of things there was a heaviness on my heart when we started this reading and there's like this this great need for this exhale, this just release. And that's what we're going to feel during this time. It's like I found my voice. I found my words. I'm starting to set myself free. It leads us to the nine of cups, to blessings coming forward within the heart and with the fool. It's like I'm jumping over these doubts and these fears that I've had. A lot of things emotionally, we're going to be very emotional during this time. And we can find that emotional reactions are just going to be so much more so much easier for us, so much more of what we are in alignment with than logical responses. So we're going to have to be mindful of that during this time. But there's also a sense of I'm going for it. I'm going after what I want. With the five of pentacles, this is a poverty mentality in the public arena. There's a sense of emotional withdrawals. And then the eight of cups, like we have to walk away from what we once thought was the answer. There's going to be a sense here of maybe I misjudged the situation. You know, maybe I didn't no, it's not that I misjudged the situation. It's that I've grown. It's that I've changed. And it's that what was once okay 
is no longer. And there's also a sense here of, of poverty, of poverty either, you know, we grew up in a household where there were always arguments about money. We always had arguments about money with a partner. You know, we could have been going along really great. Money was, was fantastic for us. And then we got together with this person and all of a sudden money started to be a real issue. The five of pentacles comes in and it's like wherever our weakness is around our ability to call forward wealth, that's going to be highlighted during this time. And there's a sense of of retail therapy coming in okay so if we tend to get upset and go shopping or you know scroll through amazon we're going to find that that's the way that we kind of soothe ourselves during this time or deal with an angry situation instead of getting mad instead of you know saying what needs to be said we're going to just internalize it and we're going to take the weight onto ourselves and then you know, try to to buy something for a momentary happiness or go out somewhere or do something for that momentary happiness instead of finding that happiness within. So just be mindful of that. The repeat of the number eight during this time also means that we're taking things astoundingly seriously, probably a little bit too seriously. And we have to step back and we have to be able to look at what we love in our lives and in ourselves. That's going to be really important for us. Let's look at the energy we need to be mindful of angels and spirit guides show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly oh okay <laughs> see everything is just coming out making itself known we have the king of cups and we have the queen of swords so the king of cups water sign energy pisces scorpio cancer this is ourselves okay also we're going to have to be mindful again of that reaction that spirit was showing of we're going to have the emotional reaction first we're going to kind of roar the the bark is may may just well be as bad as the bite because we have the Irish wolfhound here in the corner. We're going to find that there is an intensity, there's a ferocity to us, and there can be a bit of an anger, a bit of an upset, a bit of a reactionary part of us because, yes, this full moon is in Aries, because we have Mars, the god of war, you know, coming forward, that it's just going to be easier to react than it is going to be to step back and say, okay, let me look at this. We're also going to be very drawn to people who have these fiery temperaments, who have these like really strong reactions, and we're going to be pulled into their drama. We cannot live their drama, especially during this time, especially when we're looking for our own sense of peace and our own sense of prosperity. Being drawn into another person's trauma and drama and endless, you know, moments, that's just going to be too much. With the Queen of Swords, this is somebody who is very sharp with their words, who can really, you know, speak without thinking. This is going to be somebody who will also not only speak without thinking, but this is also somebody who's going to look at everything, see everything, understand everything, and aim for the weak spots. Obs not obsess. They're going to, well, we can't obsess about what they say. That's definitely coming through. And we're going to make that our only focus. It's like, oh my gosh, everybody else, we have a million people say nice things to us. One person, one, you know, schmuck says one nasty thing and all of a sudden we're like, that's it. That's devastation. We've we've just we've just fallen apart. We're going to have to be really mindful. This is going to be a person who gives a compliment and takes away the compliment in the same exact breath. Nothing is going to be straightforward with them and nothing is going to really be kind with them. So we're going to want to win their approval. We're going to want them to see us, to to like us, to understand us. They're just not they're not capable. And this is going to be a time where it's like, okay, you do you. You want to live in misery? You live in misery. You want to be upset? You be upset. I have to do me. I have to move forward for me. Now, our chakra energy for this time, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, is nurturing. This is the earth star chakra located six inches below our feet. We need to nurture ourselves. We need to nurture our inner child. We need to be there for us because we're going to have a tendency to to think, oh, well, you know, I'm just taking up time. You know, I'm not being there for everybody else. I'm not giving the way that I should be giving. And spirit saying here, it's like, oh, no, you're giving quite enough. Make sure you give to you too. Make sure you take time to, to center yourself and love yourself and connect with yourself. It's not being selfish, but it's taking time for self-care so that we can go back and we can embrace that love. We can embrace that compassion. Now, let's talk about the astrological alignment of this moon. On the 20th of October, we have the full moon in Aries. The 4th of November brings the new moon in Scorpio. A separate video will be done on that. And the 19th of November brings a lunar eclipse and the full moon in Taurus. So that's going to be really, really intense. The full moon brings home and family and close relationships into focus, especially for the two weeks after the, the full moon, the initial full moon. Everything starts coming into focus. Everything about close relationships, 
people that are around us. Opposite energies also come into play and we become very focused on what we are feeling and also on any imbalances that we have. Anything that feels out of sorts, it's not going to be like, oh, I feel like this needs some work or that needs some work. I'll work on that. I'll, you know, take time for this over over time. It's like, no, I need to fix this right now. If it's not fixed right away, then it's just over. It's terrible. We're going to have a tendency to overreact. We need to take time out to acknowledge energy drains, to acknowledge things that are just too much for us, especially in the public arena and especially in the energy that roots us, in the energy that we're getting our power from. Taking time to connect with the Earth Star Chakra to the ground, to the Earth, is going to be intrinsically important. It's going to actually be a game changer. Going outside in barefoot shoes or in or in our bare feet, connecting with the earth, that's going to be something that's beautiful. Or just sitting outside, you know, breathing in the fresh air, going for a walk, connecting with the earth is going to be very important for us. Now, this moon is a sacred moon because of its correlation with the hunting season. This is known as the hunter's moon. It's also known as the blood moon. There was power here because we're preparing, especially in the Northern Hemisphere, for winter. And with this winter preparation comes these beautiful days of cool, crisp air and this, you know, sense of of getting ready for the intensity to come especially if we live in very cold climates like I do so in the southern hemisphere this moon is bringing us to the lushness of of summer it's bringing us to the preparation for being able to soak in the sun and embrace warmth so both ways are bringing us to an intensity and a preparation for that intensity the full moon in Aries is going to be opposite opposite there we go Mars, which is the god of war, and Pluto, which is the god of death. Don't decide anything too quickly, anything big, anything impulsively during this time because we're going to regret it. We're going to be like, oh my gosh, why did I make that decision? Oh my gosh, you know, <coughs> excuse me, why did I decide to do that? Why did I decide to do this? The full moon opposite Mars gives us the strongest need to have our desires filled. We are going to be driven by our passion. Our passion can actually take over things and we can become so focused that if we're not careful, careful, we have moodiness, impulsiveness, and anger just coming into place. Like my goals are everything. I need to have achieved this yesterday. I can't believe I've, you know, not budgeted my time right, not done things correctly. What is wrong with me? And there's just that anger. There's that that chaos that comes forward. We are going to be more emotional than we are rational during this moon and much more so for us cancer during this time where it's going to be our emotions just state everything. Our emotions bring everything to the table for the best results during this moon. We need to understand our negativity, understand negative energy, and come to things with a higher energy vibration. It's kind of like calling things out, and instead of just reacting with anger, or even when we react with anger, it's stepping back because everybody's going to be just a little bit snippy, and step back and say, you know what? That wasn't right of me. That wasn't how I needed to do things. I, I apologize. And let's move forward with this understanding, with this, you know, beautiful coming together of cooperation and insight and ideas. If we if we can do that, if the person's receptive, if the person's not receptive, we have to walk away. And that's going to be a really hard thing for us during this time to know when to walk away. And it doesn't mean that we have to walk away from the person forever because that might not be even possible. But we walk away from the situation and we say, you know what? No. You know, once I would love to get into this argument and be proven right. And that's an energy that I really want during this time to be right and to and to conquer and to win and to embrace that warrior spirit but during this time that's going to be the first urge it's like I have to be right but their first urge is also going to be I have to be right and two people needing to be right just makes two people who are wrong and so during this time we need to step back and we need to say no you know I have to see what drives me I have to see what's important to me and I have to not let my ego take over because the ego is going to be a huge thing during this time and this moon is going to find us acting towards our greatest good and our greatest passion if we keep that high energy vibration and we don't let ourselves be pulled into the negativity. The full moon is squared Pluto, which brings deeply buried feelings to the surface. So this is going to be a time where we're going to be like, well, I never thought of that or I haven't thought of that for years or I didn't, you know, I didn't even remember that that happened till now. And it's going to be things that we buried, things that are astoundingly astoundingly is a harsh word but no it's an accurate word that are profoundly toxic start to come forward and if we don't look at them if we don't deal with them if we don't release them they become debilitating so do be mindful of this during this time what we need to know is that we are profoundly we are embracing a time of profound 
catharsis, okay, a profound time of being able to let go if we let ourselves, if we don't let ourselves, if we don't embrace the toxicity, well, yeah, if we don't look at the toxicity and say, I see you, I see the anger that you bring, I see the depression that you brought, I see the frustration, the despair, the how unfair life has been to me, I see it and I am releasing it. Now, it can be that we need to talk to somebody. A spiritual advisor would be a fantastic person to talk to during this time, a person who will listen, a person who will hold space for us, which can sound like a silly thing. It's like, okay, what does that mean? It means that when they're listening to us, they are present and they are listening. They are connected and they are are here. And so that's going to be what we need. Now, it can be a friend, it can be a family member that's good at this, but also it's going to need to be somebody who takes our emotional frustration seriously and doesn't pull it back to them. Mars is going to be squared Pluto, which brings a strong da drive towards success, but we can also become just, again, egocentric. It brings us this sense of I'm going to win at any cost. It brings control, it brings ruthlessness, it brings jealousy, and it brings underhandedness. People's ego, as we saw in the beginning of all this, people's egos get in the way. And this configuration with Mars squared Pluto really shows that. We need to not be drawn into other people's dramas. That's going to be a really hard thing for us. We're going to want to fix it. We're going to want to make it better. And Spirit is saying here, stop. Look at your goals. Look at what you desire. Be able to walk away. That is going to be one of the greatest challenges. And if we need to write it, you know, in, um, you know, what a race marker or even like Crayola on our, our mirrors, you know, walk away. Walk away when it's needed. Walk away before you say anything out of anger. Walk away is going to be a powerful gift for us during this time. The full moon in Aries is also cl closely aligned to the fixed star Alferg. So Alferg is also known as Eta Piscium. Now, this star is of the nature of Saturn and Jupiter and makes us prepared, it makes us determined, and it makes us successful. This is actually a really beautiful star. So we have all this, you know, fierce warrior, you know, god of death energy going on here, the intensity of the moon going on here. And then we have the beautiful energy of Saturn and of Jupiter coming forward, of Alferg coming forward. And the star rules our penile gland, which is connected with our spirituality, with our sense of connection to the divine. And this is going to be a time, this is why a spiritual advisor would be a really great person to talk to because we need that spiritual connection. We need that essence of, of heart and, and soul and, and love. Nothing that happens with a Saturn-Jupiter connection is on a small scale. It's none of it it's small. This is a star that brings powerful interactions, intensity, and desires. Alferg is also the star of mysteries. It aligns us with the greater mystery kind of of the universe, of existence, of, you know, of the spiritual, of what our soul needs. We can also be drawn on a negative scale to the negative aspects of life, the negative aspects of spirituality and, and religion. So we have to be mindful of that. Taking the higher road, going to the path of love, that's going to be one of the things here that whether we connect with this religiously or spiritually, it does not matter just to be able to connect. That's going to be the game changer here. Now at our root, this is a time to call upon our strength, to call upon our determination. This is strength, not through I'm going to win this fight. I'm going to show you that I'm right. This is strength of saying, I step back. I gather my skills. I gather what's important to me and I move forward. Whenever I think of strength, you know, when you think of, of strength in like its classical sense, you think of the big muscled person and you think, oh, okay, that's strength. But whenever I think of strength, I always think of my great grandmother who was 98 years old when she passed and just one of the strongest people you would know, just absolutely strong and determined and fierce. And that's the energy here of strength that I'm seeing for us. It's not the sense of I have to have the biggest muscles or I have to have the best of everything. It is the strength of, of character and determination and focus and insight and love. And it moves us to the devil. It moves us to really looking at a lot of the fears that have held us back, a lot of the things that have kept us small, addictions that that come forward whenever we're super stressed. It's like, oh, okay, well, you know what? I can just go smoke a cigarette or I can just, you know, have a couple of beers or, you know, even something harder. We're going to think, oh, okay, well, that's going to be fine because I just need to get the edge off. What Spirit is saying here is the only way to alleviate the edge is to look at it and to look at that sword edge dead in the eye and say, 
you don't get to cut me apart. You don't get to take away my beauty and my passion and what I desire. So we're looking at our chaotic elements. We're looking at the, the gods of chaos, which is what the devil was formed off of when Christianity swept the land. And so here, we're going to be looking at this. We're going to be looking at the harshness and the fierceness. And we're going to be saying chaos is a part of human nature. Nobody has a perfectly easy, lovely life. We either make chaos for ourselves because it keeps things interesting, or we have to face that chaos every day as we are moving forward, as we're going after what we need, as we're, you know, fighting and seeing and gaining and understanding. The, the devil here, has us actually facing the darkness, the toxicity that we talk about with the full moon squared Pluto that guides us forward, that leads us to this cathartic time of healing. And if we can do that, it's like all of a sudden we start to see where we were kind of like sheep. Everybody goes this way, so I'm going to go this way. Everybody does this thing, so I'm going to do this thing. And now we're like, no, no, I don't want that. I don't need that. I am moving forward for me, for what I desire, for what I need, and for the sense of love and commitment to to what's valuable and important to me. It moves us to the messenger of air. Our voice holds messages. And that sounds like, duh, of course it does. But what Spirit is saying here is that we're going to be saying something. And all of a sudden, it's just like we're, something's going to tumble out of our mouth and we're going to think, ooh, Freudian slip, like what the heck happened here? And it's going to be a message from Spirit that opens up the door. It's going to be that somebody says something and it's like, oh my gosh, they make us think of a person who's passed. They make us think of something that we forgot to do, that we need to do. We're going to be getting messages from spirit. Air sign energy is going to be really important to us. Communication, insight, ideas, greater understanding. For it has us looking at the hurt and the pain that we've been through. And we're going to need to vocalize it. We're going to need to give it a name. And we're going to need to really look at it openly, honestly, and tenaciously. With the, the pain of the Three of Cups, because that's how I see the Three of Cups. Everybody else can see it differently. For me, this is this is how it's read. And so here, the, the Three of Cups comes with a sense of the person who was supposed to celebrate me couldn't. Whether that be a parent, a caregiver, a lover, you know, a friend, a, a sibling, they couldn't celebrate me. And I carried that as a guilt. I put that on me. I thought, wow, I did something wrong. And what Spirit's saying here is that you didn't do something wrong. People have their lessons and also people outgrow each other. Sometimes people don't like each other and it's unfortunate. It really is unfortunate when those people happen to be, you know, a, a parent-child relationship or a caregiver-child relationship. That That's hard. That's especially hard for the child. But it does happen. And those instances are, are here to test us, to push us, to, yes, break us in a certain way and have us understand that we are not broken, to have us understand that we can still heal and still love and still grow and still trust and still move forward towards something that is beautiful. And with the three of cups, it's like, okay, but who's been in your corner? Who loves you? Who cherishes you? And if we say no one, there's no one here. It's like, okay, well, spirit's here. And that might not be a solace, but when we're trying to get our life in order, when we're looking at all the chaos and the hurt that we have been through, when we're, you know, just overwhelmed, knowing that we can connect with our spirit guides, knowing that we can, you know, sit in prayer or meditation, that becomes, that can become a ritual for us to connect with ourselves, to see ourselves more and more, because there's a sense of blessings being around us if we connect with our hearts. If we open our hearts to love and to loving ourselves and to loving those that are absolutely valuable to us. And there's a sense here of this passion, this insight, these ideas guiding us forward, leading us to something more, opening the door in a very real way, in a very open and honest way. And there becomes sweetness in our words. There becomes sweetness in our expressions. There becomes sweetness in our lives. And people are going to say, you know what, that person's just really nice, really sweet, really compassionate, really caring. And that's going to be a really great thing. Because as much as, you know, our world tends to tell us, you know, you're supposed to be the sexy one. You're supposed to be the, you know, chew them and spit them out for breakfast type of person. And you're not supposed to, to care or connect. And you're supposed to, you know, love them and leave them and type of thing. It's that human connection that makes the biggest difference in the whole entire world. It's the the love. It's it's the compassion that changes, that changes us. And that's going to be the opening of the door here. That's going to be what leads us forward. And it brings us to not only having wishes being granted, it brings us to people seeing that our hearts are just a little bit special, a little bit different than 
they happen there's there's a beauty to us that people can be drawn to people will also try and take advantage of this because they're going to think oh my gosh you're such a nice person i can obviously walk all over you be mindful of that the fool is telling us to jump it's saying go after it go after what you desire do not let the chaos of emotions knock you down it's going to be too easy right it is going to be too easy to say i can't because xyz i can't because i'm afraid or i'm overwhelmed or you know i've bitten off too much now if it is i'm you know afraid and overwhelmed we have to look at that we can't just push ourselves forward make ourselves do it without acknowledging this fear and it might be that we have to wait maybe a month before we do something extraordinary it might be that we have to you know get things in order before we push ourselves in such a strong and powerful direction. So do be mindful of that when it comes with the fool, just because you're not acting instantaneously, instantaneously, there we go. And remember, impulsiveness is something to be avoided here at this time. We need to think things through, we need to have our feet grounded, and then act, then go for it then follow what our heart is telling us to do that becomes the game changer so just being aware of that here emotionally we're going to think oh my gosh if i don't act instantaneously i've done it wrong no that's not true the five of pentacles the poverty mentality the what is this emotional withdrawal during the the public arena self within the public arena self there's a sense of lack and it's almost a sense of i need to punish myself i need to not embrace joy i need to not embrace prosperity because xyz because you know this person didn't get to and you know i have to suffer because of that because of you know because i was told that i was never going to be good enough and now i need to suffer because of that and what spirit is saying here is that suffering is enough like enough is enough the poverty mentality it gets it gets old it gets overwhelming it gets debilitating it makes us you know doubt that we even ever deserved to be happy to be successful to be prosperous to be powerful and what spirit is saying here is that if we can look at the negativity that has tried to destroy us, if we can look at the chaos that has tried to beat us down and yet say, no, I'm, I'm successful. No, I'm moving towards the success. I'm opening up this door. And we might say, you know, but I'm never going to be a millionaire, a billionaire. That's fine. Most people are never going to be that. Yet we honor these people. We put them up on pedestals and we say, look how fantastic they are because it is so rare. Anything that is different, we as human beings are drawn to. We, we, we like, we, we want to see more of. And so here, it's saying, well, the security is being able to pay my bills. The security is being able to put food on the table. The security is taking it one day at a time and embracing that and moving forward towards that. It can be a hard road. It can be an astoundingly challenging road to get basic needs met. But to understand that we deserve that to understand that there's prosperity and bounty in our existence, that's a game changer. Not that I deserve to be beaten down and never, never getting to the place that I want to be. That, that, is, that is a falsehood. It brings us to the Eight of Cups, the poverty mentality, also this, this place of never being able to advance, never being able to you know, move forward. We need to walk away from what doesn't fit anymore, what is holding us back. The Eight of Cups is walking away from what we once thought we would love, walking away and being able to embrace a new road, to be able to say, okay, I outgrew this, or you know what? I thought it would fit. I thought I liked it, but I don't. And as we look at this and as we honor this within us, we honor what we desire. We honor what we want. We honor where we're headed within our life. And that, that becomes a game changer here. We have to learn when to walk away because we're going to hold on and we're going to say, oh, I owe this, this, like person loyalty or i owe this this company loyalty and yet they're taking advantage of, of us it's not saying just walk out without having anything lined up because not being able to pay the bills not being able to put food on the table is a terrifying thing that i wish upon no one because having been there that is it, it's not okay okay it really just is absolutely stress inducing and 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 it takes it takes years to be able to heal from that and so here we have this sense of I am healing, I am moving forward, and I am going after what is needed. And that becomes that becomes our power. Now let's look at what the moon has to say for ourselves, angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, 
angels, and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. At our root, we have patience. Don't let your past hold you back. And we have to have patience with ourselves because we're going to feel that past holding us back just like we're going to feel that devil coming forward. We're going to feel that strength is, oh, I'll prove to you. No, strength is looking at the doubt we have within ourselves and not letting it control us. The past does not get to hold us back anymore. Actually, we're looking at the past and saying, mm -mm, no, you don't get to rule me. Creation. The answers you need are coming through creation, through, again, the... The full moon in Gemini is over the messenger of air. The sense of our words, the sense of our questions, the sense of our insights, the sense of our desires start to create. Our voice starts to create and it creates the healing from where we felt like an outsider. It moves us then to our subconscious emotional self, resistance, resilience. You know, we were able to grow when we were tried to be, you know, squashed. It says time to release the negativity. This resistance is the fact that we weren't destroyed and it's time to release the negativity. It's time to release the pain and go after, you know, take that leap of faith, go after what it is that we desire. As our wishes start coming true, as we see ourselves being able to move forward, it brings us to protection. The end of a tough cycle approaches in the public arena. We are protected in the public arena. We also need to protect ourselves from, again, this vampiric energy of poverty, of hurt, of pain, of disappointment, of never going to be able to move ahead of this poverty mentality. You know, I'm just not one of the lucky ones. And that's what spirit is saying. Change, change, because you are the lucky one. You are part of the lucky ones. You are enough. You are worth it. And that's going to be a really important thing because we can find that people who are just they're not really that talented. I mean, can be astoundingly successful because they believe it. And yet we have people who are really talented, who have zero self-confidence or very little self-confidence and they don't make it. And this is like enough is enough. No, you are protected. It's time to go for it. The end of a tough cycle approaches, the end of hurt and pain and disappointment and fear, or the end of just, you know, being stuck in a bad situation, it approaches, it starts to come. And that's powerful for us. It leads us to our subconscious Luna message, which is focus. Your hard work will pay off. Now we have the devil right at our root, which is Capricorn energy. We have the full moon in Capricorn over here with the end of a tough cycle approaches. The new moon in Capricorn over here, your hard work pays off strong Capricorn energy energy in this reading okay strong sense of get the job done go after it keep your feet firmly planted on the ground look see do don't wait for anybody else to do it for you go for it yourself it moves us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of the chariot okay we have the king of cups and now we have the chariot coming forward this is us in very powerful forms of ourselves. This is the very essence of us and the king of cups is the most powerful you know depiction of us in the in the court cards so here with the chariot we have to not get in our own way we're going to get in our, our own way we're going to overthink overanalyze you know and spirit is saying here stop we're also going to want to help everybody we're going to think that we have to help them and if we don't help them then how could we possibly relationships with our sacral chakra come forward as our subconscious you know our subconscious energy comes forward with our sacral chakra, our relationships, the relationships with our family, with our friends, with our loved ones. Again, what is focused around the full moon comes forward. We need to connect with these relationships. We also need to connect with our hearts and ourselves and what we desire. We have the wheel of fortune as our rooted subconscious energy. The wheel of fortune is telling us there's change. We're entering into a change of seasons, which is something that we can visually see and physically feel. We're also entering into a time of change, a new season for us to be living through, to connect with, to gain an understanding of. Our subconscious in ourself is the five of fire, the five of wands in the Rider Waite Smith deck. This is a sense of chaos. This is a sense of arguments. We have to work really hard not to get drawn into everybody else's fighting, everybody else's trauma and drama. The five of a fire here, the five of wands is showing us being set free, being able to transform and fly into peace. Our subconscious 
emotional energy is the knight of pentacles slowly and steadily moving towards prosperity moving towards success this is going to be something emotionally that we've been fighting for this is going to be something that we defend that we need to keep our eye on that we need to stay and diligent with this is where that warrior energy really comes into play because we're going to really embrace being a warrior for what we can tangibly see on this earthly plane and doing so with heart and connection our subconscious in our um, public arena self is the wheel of fortune again again everything is changing here we don't have the same footing that we do at our root so at our root things change and we're like okay i see that okay i'm facing a lot of things i'm changing a lot of things i'm moving forward with power and tenacity in the public arena we feel like we're on shakier ground and this is going to be a time where this change takes us a moment to be able to grasp to be able to hold on to and we are going to need to know that we need to walk away and we need to embrace certain changes that we're going to find a little bit hard and a little bit overwhelming okay all right cancer i hope this reading has resonated with you i wish you nothing but light love peace and happiness may harmony always be with you i'm sending loving healing energy to each and every one of you i love you all and stay safe let's end this reading with a meditation a clearing away of negative energy a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power the intensity and the immense impact of this full moon so take a nice deep breath in exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Cancer, and may you have a blessed moon.